Now, one of the benefits we just saw with the light sails and stuff is we can approach fractions of the speed of light. So what are actually about using the speed of light itself and relativity? How can we go around this? Well, this is always a limit I used to yeah. learn about when I was reading science fiction as a kid. You can't go faster than the speed of light. This is a real problem. That's right. Because I mean, it's going to take years. That's right. It's all the science fiction movies where you're one week you're in Alpha Centauri, next week you're in Sirius. Yeah. No. No. 50 years minimum. Um, and we were always told the problem is relativity. You can't go faster than light. Actually, as we've seen, that's not the problem. Yeah. We can't even get to 10% of the speed of light. <laughs> the problem is we have no idea how to do it. Yeah. Yes, even 10% is really hard. Yeah. So we're actually nowhere close to getting anywhere near the speed of light. At 10%, it's not an issue. Yeah. But if somehow you yep. could get close to the speed of light, there are relativity starts being important. Yeah, so what if like, we got to like 80% the speed of light? That yeah. would help. Who knows how we could possibly do that? But there is one thing that helps you and one thing that hurts you. Right. So the thing that helps you is when you get close to the speed of light, time for you yes. slows down. That's right. So if you're going at 99% of the speed of light, your time is going much slower. So even though it might take four years to get to Proxima Centauri, you might only think a few months have passed. Now, this is called time dilation, right? It's called time dilation. From us on Earth, it's still four years. So if you went to Proxima Centauri uh, and then came back, yep. you might only be a few months older, but your twin brother, uh, four eight years, years old. older, you no longer yeah. be the same age as your twin. Yep. Yeah. And they've, we've done actually experiments using atomic clocks in, in the speed of light, right? So again, this is not a made up factor. We, we really know this is the problem. Yes. I mean, while we can't get spacecraft near the speed of light, you can get particles there That's quite easily. Exactly. In fact, even an old fashioned uh, TV, a cathode ray tube TV, the electrons in there are going about half the speed of light. Oh, okay. So you might well have had a uh, light, light speed time accelerator time. In, your, in your lounge. There you go. Um, and you ha and you can measure the time dilation and it's definitely real. Yep. So that's true. That's that's a good thing. It gets you less bored. Yep. And again, that, that hundred years or thousand years is not a hundred or thousand years. It only feels like maybe like months and I'd sign up for that. Yeah. The trouble is that it does mean you can't get faster than light. Right. No matter what your technology is. This all used to bug me as a kid. <laughs> why can't you go faster? You go to 99% of the speed of light and then you put your foot on the accelerator. <laughs> and why don't you just cruise past it. And the trouble is that as you get close to the speed of light, you get heavier. Yep. It's kind of like a mass dilation. Okay. And as you get closer and closer to the speed of light, your mass becomes nearly infinite. Actually, to get to the speed of light, you need to have infinite mass. So your spacecraft that may have weighed 100 tons when you set out, by the time it's 99.9999, etc., it, is, it, it is. might weigh billions of tons. Okay. And because it now weighs billions of tons, that makes it very hard to accelerate. Ah, so you've naturally slowed down. Yes, and the same rocket boost that gave you a big acceleration when you're going slowly, you're now because you weigh so much, makes almost no difference. Mm. And of course, as you get right up to the speed of light, your mass becomes infinite, which means you need infinite energy to accelerate yourself anymore. I mean, could we go like beyond the speed of light? Can you like jump over You'd the speed to have limit? More than infinite amount of energy to go faster than the speed of light. Okay, so no is what I'm hearing. No is okay. All right. I mean, there's speculation about tachyons that only yeah, yeah, go no, fast, no, no, like yeah, go exactly. backwards in time and things, but... Uh, <laughs> Nuclear bombs in space may be easier. <laughs> uh, but that's, yeah. So... If you're going to go next week in Alpha Centauri, at 99% it's a bit like you might think it's next week in Alpha Centauri, but it really is yeah. four years. Um, so, but for real science fiction where you zip between different solar systems... We you need something to, completely different. You need to cheat, basically. Okay. And so there's concepts like hyperspace and warp drive and wormholes and all sorts of other science fiction-y concepts to try and get... Um, I, I, are, are any of them kind of possible? Practical? Real? <laughs> well, let's... Um, wormholes. Okay. The basic idea is that space is something that can bend. Okay. So let's imagine... Here we have a piece of space. Okay, so this is our universe. Yep. And normally if I want to get from here, which is Earth, to over there, I have to go all <laughs> the way along there, which takes a long time. Yep. But if you can and maybe bend space, and you can jump straight from here to there. So well, instead of making you faster, you shorten the distance. That's right. Okay. So that's the idea behind wormholes and some of the ideas. Now, and we know space can be bent. Right. So here's the idea. We've, we have a, a wormhole. We bend space here. So instead, if you want to get from this star to that star, instead of the normal route, which might take thousands of years, you jump Take through. the shortcut. Take the shortcut. Now, so people like hypothesize that maybe these wormholes are linked to black holes and other things like that, but yeah. we don't really know. Here's right? a spacecraft going through a wormhole and an artist's impression. Now, the trouble is 
the only thing we know of that bends space is gravity. Yes. Um, and that's as Einstein's theory of general relativity says that, sure, space is bent by gravity. And, and we know this, right? Again, yep. we can measure this. Again, we can measure this. And the trouble is that normally the bending is very, very small. That's right. Even the mass of the Earth only gives a tiny yeah, bending. Yeah, exactly. To get a bending enough that it might actually produce a wormhole, you're going to need a black hole. That's right. So let's imagine we have a black hole, a collapsed star. That might cause a rupture in space-time. Okay. Um, we don't know what happens inside a black That's hole. That's right. Um, so there's lots of wild speculation, but we don't know. We don't have a black hole in the lab, no. which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd like it, but I'm told I can't. Yeah, no black holes for you, Brad. <laughs> um, so, and basically we have the trouble that the laws of physics are inconsistent yeah. in the middle of things. So we have to make up a new law of physics. We have no idea because we don't have a black hole in our lab. That's right. So you, every every theoretical physicist has a grand unified theory in their back pocket, which <laughs> will explain what happens in a black hole. They'll give different answers. That's right. And no one really knows. And even if you send someone into a black hole to find out, they might find out, but they can't send the message out. That's right. And even to get to the black hole is still going to take so long because we were only talking about Alpha Centauri. The nearest black hole is about a thousand light years away, so, you know, 250 times further than Alpha Centauri, so we still can't even get there to test the theory. Yes, we get movies like um, yep. Stella, where they had a black hole hiding behind Jupiter, I believe, or Saturn. Saturn, like that, yeah, exactly. Unless convenient. Some, unless but... some convenient aliens put a black hole there, it's not going to happen. That's right. But there's also a problem that what happens when you get near a black hole is you get uh, spaghettified. Mm -hmm. There are tidal forces. What happens is, as you're orbiting around a black hole, the bits of you that are closer to it have to orbit faster That's than right. the bits that are further away, because uh, they have to balance the stronger gravity. So you can see here's what happens to a person near a black hole. And we've seen stars get these, what we call these tidal disruption events, where they get tidally disrupted yes. because they go into these orbits. Yes, yeah, so probably if you fall in a black hole, you never come out, you get compressed to zero size. Yeah. Even the act of falling into a black hole is going to spaghettify you. Yeah. And there are no black holes close to us. And we don't know anything else that can convert <laughs> space-time, uh, bend space-time enough. And if it did bend space-time, it would probably form a black hole right away and destroy you and the Earth. So the answer is no. So the answer is this relies on physics that it has not been invented. Yeah. And sometimes you can say, look, we're going to get better solar cells. I'm sure someone's going to invent them in yeah. reasonable confidence. This is, we've got to discover a whole new law of physics. Yeah. It bears no resemblance to anything we've seen before. And we've no idea if it's there exactly. or not. It probably isn't. Um, and then we actually have to turn that law of physics into practical things to actually survive and do, which takes however yeah. long you want to make up. So is it impossible? No. I mean, yeah. obviously I can't rule out laws of physics that haven't been discovered yet. Why not, Paul? Why not? Um, I mean, you could have a law of physics that says you can make wormholes yeah. and teleport to anywhere in the universe. There could be a law of physics that says next Thursday Brad is going to turn into a potted plant. I can't rule that out either. That's true. For we'll, we'll, we'll my it. mind, the two are about equally probable. <laughs> so it's one of these things that, you know, while science fiction makes it seem kind of common and, hey, you know, we'll just work it out one day, we're, we're really nowhere near it. We're nowhere near it. I would say we're never going to be anywhere near it. Um, and it, it's probably no, no it to get near. Yeah. Um, of course, is it possible? No. Um, and there are certainly lots of theories of quantum mechanics and relativity which are about warping and quantizing space-time and that kind of sounds sexy and but turning that into a, a practical way of traveling faster than light <laughs> is, a, is a big ass and I guess especially as we talked about in other sections of the course we have ideas that are kind of real like light sails even or nuclear propulsion that we can kind of do and we can you know invest and research and improve upon that probably could get us closer to these goals rather than some new framework that may or may not exist that we haven't even thought about how we think about coming up with it. That's right. So you might get lucky. I would put long odds against it. Um, but I mean, people in the past have said physics will never discover this and it has. That's true. Um, but it's, it's not quite like that in this case. And probably not in anyone's lifetimes right now. Yeah, I mean, previous barriers that physics have overcome have been things like the speed of sound and so on, which is a purely engineering barrier. Yeah. This is a law of physics. You need a new law of physics. And by definition, law of physics you don't know, you don't know what they are. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there probably are some new laws of physics. You have to exactly, that's right, that's right. But would they be just such that they would give you this? Probably not. 